In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I love many things about our community here at St. Anthony. One of the most enjoyable things we do so well as a community is to break bread together. A meal is not simply the eating of food. It is a social occasion. When people break bread or share a meal, they also have the opportunity to share each other's lives and thoughts, to grow together in love and mutual appreciation. Our Lord knew that meals are an opportunity to get to know people and to share with them the good news of God's love and forgiveness. He invited himself to the home of Zacchaeus and filled his household with joy. The call of Matthew led to a festive meal in his house where other tax collectors and outcasts joined Jesus and his disciples at table to the dismay of the Pharisees. Jesus used the image of banquets to illustrate his teachings, and he likened God's kingdom to a great feast. In today's gospel lesson, we hear of the special meal Jesus shared with some 5,000 people. He fed a multitude of men, women, and children that had come to hear him. The miracle of the multiplication of the loaves is reported in all four of our beautiful Gospels. Reading about this miracle for the first time, one gets the impression that Jesus is displaying a kind act to feed people who are hungry. However, the image of Jesus feeding the multitudes around him is an image of the Messiah feeding his people. In the Old Testament, when the Israelites had escaped from Egypt but then faced terrible hunger in the wilderness, God sent manna to satisfy his people. In the days of Jesus, God again had acted by sending his son to feed his people not only with bread but also with the truth of his teachings. The spiritual meaning of the feeding of the 5,000 is most clearly given in the Gospel of John, chapter 6. Here we read that the multitude understood the miracle in the wilderness as a messianic sign. Some of the people tried to proclaim Jesus a king by compulsion but he escaped from them. He did not want to play into their hands and encourage their political ideas about the expected Messiah. In the great discourse of Jesus, which follows Jesus, rebukes people for chasing after him simply to get more bread. So he did not want them to be doing just that. He challenges them to understand the true meaning of the miracle instead and to seek the bread of eternal life. What, or rather who, is this bread of eternal life? Jesus answers with the following profound words. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, but they died. But the bread that comes down from heaven is of such a kind that whoever eats it will not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. The church fathers interpreted the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 as an anticipation of the Eucharist in which Christ offers himself to us as the heavenly bread. 
a continuation of the Last Supper, a mystic supper. The Eucharist is a mystical meal which we share with Christ and with one another. Through the Eucharist, we are united with the Lord and with one another. This connection is already made in the Gospel of John, where Christ clearly hints at the sacrament of the Eucharist. These are his words. I am telling you the truth. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him to life in the last day. For my flesh is the true food, my blood is the real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. As Orthodox Christians, we also celebrate the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves in yet another, another way through the service of the Articlesia, or the blessing of the five loaves. And I'm sure you are all familiar at the great vespers for our patron Saint Anthony and in any church uh, before their uh, great vesper service or during their great vesper service for their patron saint. Wonderful ladies bake uh, these loaves known as artoclasia and they bring it to the church and offer it and the five loaves are blessed through the service of the Artoclasia and distributed at the conclusion of the service to the faithful. As we remember our Lord feeding the multitude, we continue to celebrate the miracle of sharing joy and unity among those who believe and delight in Christ. The Artoclasia is also an inspiration to reach out to others and to share our resources with the poor and the needy. And as the service is concluding, the entire congregation sings the following beautiful words. The rich have become poor and have hungered, but they who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Eating and drinking, wealth and poverty receive new meaning in the light of our shared life in unity in Jesus Christ. Amen.